Well, here's yet another Christopher O'Brien book review. Um, I think this is the last of the books I've got by Mr. O'Brien on, again, this is Secrets of the Mysterious Valley. Um, now, I, I got this copy in, uh, I think, at Half Price Books in Plano uh, around 2009, I think it was. But the actual publishing date of this is... June 2007. Now, my only complaint with this particular book is it could have used a little better editor, um, and uh, some of the material is rehashed from his previous two books, but there is a lot of uh, new material. It's kind of like a greatest hits album from uh, your favorite band where there's some repeat material that you probably have other places, but it's okay because now you have it all together. So um, there is that. And again, like with my other books, I have dog-eared this uh, liberally throughout. I've, I've dog-eared anytime there's something substantial, I dog-ear the page, especially if it's a, a place or a person that, uh, you know, that is of note, uh, specifically when he gives out locations. I always like to check that stuff out. Here. And my my youngest daughter wants very badly to be in a book review about cattle mutilation. I'm so going here she to is. Bed. Okay. Night night. Night night. Do you want to say night night to the camera? Night night. Yep. There she is. All right. Bonk. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good night. All right. So <laughs> Secrets of the Mysterious Valley. Um, again, good treatment of the subject of all things weird out of the San Luis Valley. Um, if you're into that sort of thing, it, cattle mutilations, ghosts, um, uh, cryptozoological stuff like Bigfoot and, uh, um, anyway, all of that stuff in that unsolved mysteries, uh, weird, unexplained phenomena. And one of the neat things about Mr. Brian, I'll say is, his approach is very casual, so his writing style is one of those things you'll either love it or hate it. Um, but the best thing is he keeps a very open mind about a lot of the subjects that he talks about. Like, for instance, cattle mutilations. He addresses all of the uh, all the evidence and throws it out there for you to make up your mind because, again, that is one of those things that is far from settled. So uh, there's a lot of books out there that, that throw out theories, but... I have yet to run across a book that really definitively says, hey, we figured it all out. Here it is. Here's the answer to this riddle. So again, if you're fascinated by unexplained, unsolved mysteries, the cattle mutilation is fascinating. And uh, and Christopher O'Brien has some great books on it. In fact, I, I do think I have one or two more of his books. So uh, I'll cover those later on in another review. But this is great. And again, one of the things that makes him different than, say, a lot of the other UFO researchers out there putting out books like this is his material. He's really good about uh, uh, covering all the information and not taking out stuff that may or may not agree with a, uh, with a particular theory. Uh, like there's a lot of uh, authors that address the UFO phenomenon or the cattle mutilation phenomenon that leave out covert military activity completely or cult activity completely and just say, well, that that's not uh, that that can't be so. Like cults couldn't possibly have helicopters or uh, the military couldn't possibly be doing this. So we're just going to take that off the table. And uh, O'Brien doesn't do that. He's really good about. Uh, looking into all the information, um, again, naming names, places, dates, times, all that stuff. So great information. If you're interested in that stuff, and if, if you're just interested in uh, unsolved mysteries in general, the cattle mutilation subject by itself is fascinating. But also, I love the mountains. I love visiting this area. I love the area around Taos. Again, the San Luis Valley for the uninitiated runs from about around the Taos area up north all the way to Salida. So uh, it's kind of south central Colorado running down into north central uh, uh, New Mexico. And fascinating area. And as I mentioned in my other reviews, I'm going to say it again, just like a broken record here. But uh, if you're ever in this area, ask the locals about some of this stuff. Don't say aliens. Don't say UFOs. Say, have you ever seen an alien? Just ask them about what kind of weird stuff they've seen in the area. And you will be amazed how many people will tell you stories of crazy, high strange, as he calls it, high strange activity uh, that has happened in that area. 
So uh, great book. And there's some really kind of cryptic stuff in the end about one of the things I've got dog-eared in this, this particular book is uh, when he started looking into some of the underground bases about having his house broken into and some of his research uh, stuff stolen. And uh, apparently also supposedly some guys who did find a secret base or something or claim they had, uh, one of the guys was... Uh, you know, disappeared or something. I, I can't remember exactly how, but again, great information. All of his uh, books really detail a lot of fascinating, unusual activity in the San Luis Valley, Valley and specifically UFO activity, ghost activity, cryptozoological, uh, like Bigfoot and other creatures and stuff like that, cattle mutilations, and then uh, also covert military activity, which sometimes overlaps with all these other things and possibly more than any of us realize at this point. So great information. Again, uh, I've dog-eared the heck out of this, so hopefully my children can make sense of this someday when they're going through all of this. But uh, the uh, Secrets of the Mysterious Valley. Again, kind of a rehash, kind of like a greatest hits album of the previous two books, but uh, still lots of good information and uh, not to be missed if you're a fan of Christopher O'Brien's work.